Welcome to the Wrap Yourself in Joy podcast. I'm Karen Dwyer, speaker, teacher, and author of four books on joy. If you are searching for more joy in your life, join me for about 15 minutes every week. It could change your life. We will explore how to find true joy, how to awaken joy, how to choose joy during challenging times, and how to create a joy-filled prayer life. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. Hello, and welcome back to Wrap Yourself in Joy. I'm Karen Dwyer, and this is Podcast 104. Today, we are rapping joy. Oh, no, it's not rap music. It's the W-R-A-P kind. We continue from our last podcast on the topic of awakening joy. It's from Chapter 3 of my book, Wrap Yourself in Joy, if you're following along. Did you know that God yearns for a relationship with you? He does. In fact, he yearns for conversation with you, sharing heart-to-heart. That's what prayer is. The Catechism of the Catholic Church defines prayer as a covenant relationship between God and man, or God and humans. Inherent in any relationship is two-way conversation. So God wants a personal relationship with you, and that involves two-way communication. There is nothing more joyful than hearing God speak to you in Scripture. Of course, it took me a while to learn that. I confessed to you last week that for years I was a talkaholic, especially in prayer. I didn't take time to listen to God. Oh, I would take a few minutes to pray, or maybe even longer, and I did all the talking. And I went away thinking, wasn't that just a great time of prayer? I never listened to to the one who has many great and wonderful things to share with me and each of us. So today, as we explore how to wrap joy, W-R-A-P, joy, it is one more way to awaken joy, true joy in your life. You see, wrap is an acronym for a way to hear God speak to you in Scripture, and it will help you listen to Him. Did you know that there is a benefit in reading and praying with Scripture? You can receive joy especially if you do it regularly. For example, Psalm 1, the New Revised Standard Version, says this, Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord their God, and on His law they meditate day and night. Happy or blessed in some translations is not short-term happiness found in passing circumstances. That Hebrew word, ashrei, is used in the original language of the Old Testament that we translate happy or blessed. It really means a deep spiritual joy from being with God and the pleasures from that relationship. It's a deep enrichment. Wow, what a great encouragement to read God's Word. Did you notice the other joy word in Psalm 1-2? Delight! That means joyful, joyous, pleasure, and satisfaction. So here it is, happy or filled with deep spiritual joy are those who delight, have deep pleasure, satisfaction, and joy in the law of the Lord, which is God's instruction, and on His law they meditate, mull it over, think on it, pray it to God day and night. So the point is this, there is a benefit, a blessedness, a deep, joyous pleasure and satisfaction that will come when you listen to the Lord in the verses of Scripture, and then you talk to Him about it. Of course, you listen from the depths of your heart, and you respond to what God says. So are you listening? Or are you a talkaholic, like I can be, especially in prayer? Reverend Mark Thibodeau, in the Armchair Mystic book, describes four stages of prayer. I've made these stages into a personal survey for your reflection. You can get it on my webpage, Wrap Yourself in Joy, or in the book. He calls the four stages these four ways. He says, stage one is talking at God. Stage two is talking to God. Stage three is listening to God speak to your heart. And stage four is resting in God's presence. So I'm going to ask these again of you and just think about how you would respond in a scale from 1 to 10. Are you a 1, you never do it? Are you a 10, you almost always do it? So here we go. 
Number one, do you talk at God daily? Do you do all the talking? Or do you use mainly ready-made prayers, which are great for when you're tired or emotionally drained or bringing you into prayer, but you easily lose the meaning through repetition, and you often do not think about or experience the presence of God? One to ten, where are you? Number two, do you talk to God daily? Do you speak simple and beautiful words to God, and you know He listens to you, but you don't listen to Him speak much? Number three, do you spend a few minutes reading the verses of Scripture and allowing the Lord to speak to you? That means you take time to listen. You might even write down some of the conversation. Well, here's stage four. I rest in God's presence. I enjoy God's company, and I receive His love daily and His joy. So, how did you do? Did you make it to stage three? How about, did you make it to 10 points? Or what about stage four? Stage three leads to stage four. So how are you doing? St. Augustine said, your prayer is your word addressed to God. But when you read the Bible, God speaks to you. When you pray, you speak to God. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI says, the diligent reading of sacred scripture accompanied by prayer brings about the intimate dialogue in which the person reading hears God who is speaking and in praying responds to Him with trusting openness of heart. There is one more benefit of reading and praying God's Word. St. Basil the Great points this out. He is an early church father of Christianity, especially honored in the Anglican, Lutheran, and Catholic churches. For example, in the Catholic Church, he's called a saint and doctor who defended the faith against major heresies in the 4th century. Well, this is what he says. The Holy Spirit composed the scriptures so that in them, as in a pharmacy open to all souls, we might each of us be able to find the medicine suited to our own particular illnesses. And in the books of the Psalms, we find remedies just right for our cases. In other words, besides joy and love, Basil the Great reminds us that the Lord, through the passages of scriptures, heals our wounds, our traumas, our anguishes, and even our worries as we read and listen and pray with the Word of God. So do you have a lot of cases? I've had a lot of cases. I still have cases. That's what St. Basil called it anyway. You might call it issues. St. Basil the Great speaks from down through the centuries, and he says this, You need the remedies just right for your cases. Personally, and in the most difficult times of life, I have had them, and the scriptures have given me great comfort and peace and joy. So are you ready to begin learning how to wrap yourself in joy? My husband Larry and I wrote a book called Wrap Yourself in Scripture, which explains the wrap method in more detail. But I also have handouts available at my wrapyourselfinjoy.com website, as well as in the book, Wrap Yourself in Joy. So to begin a wrap, W-R-A-P, you're going to need your Bible, a small notebook, just a small, inexpensive, spiral-bound notebook. You probably have one laying around your home, and you'll also need a pen or pencil. So open up the spiral-bound notebook and spread out on the left side the word Wrap. Start with a W, go down five lines or six, then R, then go down five or six lines, and then an A, and then go down five or six lines, and then a P. Wrap is an acronym for a method of reading, praying, and reflecting on Scripture so that the Word comes alive and you hear God speak to your heart. It's a form of Lexio Divina. That's reading to hear God speak to you in the Word of God and meditating on His Word so that it becomes prayer. And it works best if you also use a journal or write down what you hear. So your spiral-bound notebook is your journal. Well, before you begin, I suggest you say, Come, Holy Spirit, and speak to me in God's Word. Open my ears to hear. So let's start with the W. Next to it, you can write down the word write. Then open your Bible and begin to read a section of Scripture. You can start with a gospel such as Mark or John or Psalm, 
or other book, especially in the New Testament. Begin to read and notice a word or phrase that catches your attention, inspires you, or it seems to arise out of the pages. Then stop and write down the verse or the word next to the W. St. Philip Neri describes the stage as listening for the words upon which your heart rests. Next, go down to the R, and next to it, you can write the word reflect. And you're going to be looking for the truth or principle in that word or verse, that one verse that you wrote down that seemed to arise off the page. What is it saying to you? The word reflect is often translated meditate from the Hebrew word in the Old Testament, Hagah, and most accurately means to mull it over and mutter it out loud and even mentally visualize it. Speak about the words that you receive to God. Write down any conversation. Think about what it means. Talk to God about it. Next, go to the A and write down apply. Ask Jesus for guidance about how you can respond in a practical way to the words that have just inspired your heart. Keep in mind, the Lord always speaks in love. So write down a step you can take to apply His Word to your life. And last of all, next to the P, write down the words, pray and praise. It's here you're going to write a prayer from your heart that offers praise and thanksgiving. Praise Jesus for being your shepherd, your healer, your companion. Thank Him for the moments together in the scriptures and the thoughts He's brought to your mind. Thank Him for speaking to you and loving you. Finally, pray the scripture verses back to the Lord in your own words. Ask for what you need. Ask for help, for strength, for healing, for forgiveness, for help in extending forgiveness, and write down your prayer. And when you're finished, just rest. That's your moment to receive. So at the end of your prayer, stop writing, stop speaking, and just receive. Simply rest in Jesus. Stay close to his heart. Pause and receive his love, his joy, and his strength. Let him love you. Now I'm going to share an example of a rap that the Lord was speaking to me when I was going through a very discouraging time in my life. I was reading Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18. And as I read, verses 1 and 2 and 14 seemed to arise out of the page to me. It caught my attention. And these are the words I read. Lord, you have probed me. You know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. You formed my inner being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My very self you know well. That was what I wrote down. Then I went to reflect. And this is just a short version of what I wrote. As I reflected, this is what I thought. God really knows me. He sees all my flaws and he still loves me. God knows me well. He made me well. It is well with my soul. It is well with my Lord. And that was the truth I reflected on. And I was especially drawn to the word, well. The Lord knows me well. He made me well. It's well with my Lord. Then I went to the A, the apply. And this is where I was looking at how I can apply that the Lord knows me well. And he loves me well. And this is what I wrote. I need to remember God's well toward me. When I am discouraged, when I feel unworthy, when I feel alone, when I feel dissatisfied with my imperfections, I will say it is well with my soul. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit knows me well. Jesus died for me, for my sins, and for my imperfection. He loves me. And I am well with the Lord Jesus. He loves me well. And last of all, by the P, the pray and praise, I wrote, Dear Heavenly Father, I praise you that you are the well of the universe. You made your creation well, and you made me well. You know me well, and you still love me well. 
Thank you, Lord, for your will. Dear Jesus, please give me the grace to receive your will and to always remember that you are with me and you know me well, even in discouragement, even in insults, even when I'm let down by others, and even in my own sin and selfishness. Lord, I love you and I receive your will. Amen. Now I rest in the presence of Jesus. I receive your love, your grace, your strength, and your joy. Now you know how to wrap yourself in joy with Scripture, and it will awaken more joy in your life. As we come to the end of our podcast for today, I want you to know I am so glad you have joined this search for joy. It's the fourth podcast in the series of Wrap Yourself in Joy. Remember, you can follow along with my book, Wrap Yourself in Joy, and I hope you use the acronym WRAP, taking time to let Jesus speak to you in the verses of Scripture and praying with them regularly will lead you to deep spiritual happiness and joy. You can be filled with God's joy, the joy of Jesus and the joy of the Holy Spirit. I would like to end by praying with you right now. So take a moment of silence and put yourself in a prayerful position. It will only take a minute, and all you have to do is receive this prayer for wrapping joy. Lord Jesus, your desire is to fill us with your love and joy. Each one listening belongs to you and wants to hear you speak to them. You know what is best for their lives, and you want to lead them. Thank you for your holy scriptures that daily guide us into deep and lasting joy. Help each one to listen and talk to you today. Speak to their hearts, open their ears to hear and their eyes to see you. Holy Spirit, I ask that you enlighten their minds to your truths. Fill each one with the delights of meditating on and praying with your word. We give you thanks and praise forever. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast. And if you would like to read more about joy, including my book, Wrap Yourself in Joy, or would like to download the show notes from today, you can go to wrapyourselfinjoy.com. Until next week, this is Karen Dwyer saying, wrap yourself in joy. Mm -hmm.